which of the following does not increase the action of warfarin? Now we know that warfarin is an oral anticoagulant. Warfarin acts by inhibiting activation of factors 2, 7, 9, 10. So it is only a in vivo acting agent. Warfarin has no in vitro action. So warfarin is metabolized by CYP2C9. And any drug which induces CYP2C9 will accelerate metabolism of warfarin. And any drug that inhibits CYP2C9 will inhibit the metabolism of warfarin, therefore raise the level of warfarin. So now if you consider these drugs, cimetidine. Cimetidine is known as a inhibitor of CYP enzymes. It will inhibit multiple CYP enzymes including CYP2C9. Isoniazid, rifampicin, cotrimoxazole. Out of this, isoniazid and cotrimoxazole also to some extent inhibit CYP2C9. But rifampicin is an inducer of CYP enzymes including CYP2C9. Therefore, rifampicin will accelerate the metabolism of warfarin and it will decrease the effect of warfarin. So, the answer is rifampicin for this. Now, all of the following increases the effect of warfarin except again the options are little bit changed. Cimetidine, again it is a CYP3A4 inhibitor, CYP2C9 inhibitor, it will elevate the levels of warfarin. Disulfiram, it is also a inhibitor of CYP enzymes, but to a little extent as compared to cimetidine, its capability is very less. Cotrimoxazole, that is also having an ability to inhibit enzymes because of the sulfonamide component in that. Griseofulvin on the other hand if you take, griseofulvin is an only antifungal drug which is an enzyme inducer. Most antifungal drugs that we come across are enzyme inhibitors. Griseofulvin is an exception. Griseofulvin is an enzyme inducer. Because it is an enzyme inducer, griseofulvin will lower the effect of warfarin. Which of the following causes OC pill failure? Now, you have to choose only one best possible answer. Therefore, you have to choose the drug which has highest capability of stimulating hepatic drug metabolizing enzymes. Carbamazepine to some extent it can increase the drug metabolizing enzymes, but it will be definitely far less than what rifampicin can do. Rifampicin is the most potent hepatic microsomal enzyme inducer out of the list of drugs that you have on the question. So, most importantly it is rifampicin which will induce the metabolism of the combined contraceptive pill and it will lead to failure of contraception. NSAIDs do not induce or inhibit microsomal enzymes. Ethambutol does not induce or inhibit enzymes. So, only rifampicin has the capability to induce microsomal enzymes, induce metabolism of OC pills, therefore failure of contraception. If some this question is asked in a different way, if I give NSAID, if I give ethambutol, if I give pyrazinamide and if I give ampicillin and I ask which of these following cause failure of contraception. So, I do not give rifampicin, I do not give carbamazepine, I give I, ethambutol, I give NSAID, I give pyrazinamide, I give ampicillin and ask which of these is more likely to cause failure of contraception. So, what will be the answer? No, pyrazinamide is neither inducer nor inhibitor, ethambutol neither inducer nor inhibitor, NSAID neither inducer nor inhibitor, ampicillin also neither inducer nor inhibitor. But ampicillin will cause failure of contraception because ampicillin is a drug which has the ability to alter the gut flora and gut flora plays a very important role in enterohepatic recycling. Actually, the deconjugation enzymes are produced by the gut flora. So, all hormones including oral contraceptive pills undergo significant enterohepatic cycling and the enterohepatic cycling takes place because of the presence of the gut flora. Whenever the OC pill is conjugated in the liver, it again undergoes deconjugation in the gut and the deconjugated estrogen progesterone get reabsorbed. But if the flora is all removed, the flora will not be able to deconjugate, therefore estrogen progesterone will be lost in bile and feces. So, the person will have suboptimal concentration of estrogen and progesterone. So, if you do not have an inducer, if you do not have an inhibitor, you have to think in terms of whether it can alter the gut flora or not. And we know that broad spectrum antibiotics, most of them can alter gut flora. 
So, this is an MRCP question actually, where instead of asking about inducers and inhibitor, they ask about drugs which can alter the gut flora, therefore can lead to failure of intrahepatic circulation and therefore lower the concentrations of OC pills leading to failure of oral contraceptive agents. Which of the following causes OCP failure? Again, this is the same question. Drugs that increase the blood level of carbamazepine is rifampicin. Rifampicin will induce the metabolism of carbamazepine, so it will reduce the level. Ketoconazole is an enzyme inhibitor. It will elevate the level of many drugs including carbamazepine. Phenytoin is an enzyme inducer, so it will induce the metabolism of carbamazepine. It will lower. Griseofulvin is also enzyme inducer, it will also lower. So, the only option that is correct here is ketoconazole. Theophylline levels in blood are increased by barbiturates. Barbiturates are most well known enzyme inducers. Classical examples of enzyme inducers are barbiturates and rifampicin. Barbiturates induce the metabolism of theophylline, theophylline level will fall. So, it will not increase. Methotrexate. Methotrexate, what it will do to theophylline levels in the blood? Methotrexate is not enzyme inducer or inhibitor. Cimetidine is an enzyme inhibitor. It will elevate levels of theophylline. All of the above is not correct. So, the only drug which will elevate the levels of theophylline is cimetidine because of inhibition of the cytochrome P450 enzymes. That is why nowadays no one uses cimetidine. These questions were framed only to test theoretical capability. The most important interaction of theophylline is not with cimetidine, but with erythromycin. See, any patient admitted to ICU with acute respiratory distress, once upon a time, what they used to do is, best is to give one bronchodilator, oxygen, one steroid, theophylline and one antibiotic. You know, status asthmaticus most important precipitant is infection. So, they used to give antibiotic and you know, one of the important antibiotics which achieve very good concentrations in the sinuses and the upper as well as lower respiratory tract are macrolides and they can be given safely irrespective of allergic hypersensitivity reaction. They can be safely given even in pregnancy, they can be safely given in children also. So, because of that profile, that type of spectrum, that type of convenience, people used to prescribe macrolide antibiotics and macrolide antibiotics especially erythromycin is a CYP3A4 inhibitor. So, it used to elevate the levels of theophylline. So, that interaction is more practical, more likely, more clinical rather than cimetidine with theophylline. Which of the following inhibits steroid hormone synthesis? This is very clear cut because the enzymes that are required for steroid hormone synthesis are the enzymes which are also responsible for synthesis of ergosterol in the fungal cell wall. So, mostly azole antifungals have this type of mechanism of action. So, here the azole antifungal that you have is ketoconazole. So, all azole antifungals they act by inhibiting the fungal sterol synthesis. So, they will have some enzymes in common to the human steroid hormone synthesis. Therefore, all azole antifungals have increased risk of adrenal hormone production inhibition. All decrease effectiveness of OC pills except rifampicin will decrease the efficacy because it will induce the metabolism. Phenytoin also induces metabolism. Phenobarbitone also induces metabolism. Ketoconazole inhibits metabolism. So, all decrease effectiveness of OC pills except ketoconazole. Ketoconazole will actually increase the levels of OC pills. So, it cannot lead to failure of OC pills. Chloramphenicol does not increase the blood level of which drug? Now, if you take phenytoin, tolbutamide, phenylbutazone, cyclofusamide, chloramphenicol has got dual mechanism of action. It is an inhibitor of enzymes in the liver as well as it can displace some drugs from plasma protein binding. But that interaction, either metabolism or displacement, are seen with all except phenylbutazone. So, phenylbutazone levels are not affected with chloramphenicol. There are more important questions about chloramphenicol than this that come in the exam. One is of course, grey baby syndrome, other is what is the only indication in the current context for chloramphenicol? What is the current indication for chloramphenicol? 
Harrison's if you see there will be one sentence which one okay what what happens in person with hiv why you want to use chloramphenicol for what particular indication pneumonia or meningitis meningitis neisseria meningitis meningitis in immunocompromised individuals or otherwise best drug is chloramphenicol chloramphenicol reaches the csf in very high concentration it is used in treatment of neisseria infections it is orphan drug or not an orphan drug for most of the western countries this is an orphan drug so all of the following are true about chloramphenicol except they may give it is an orphan drug highly efficacious in neisseria meningitis infection chloramphenicol can cause gray baby syndrome chloramphenicol can cause two types of bone marrow depression one is idiosyncratic and other is dose related one is idiosyncratic and other is dose related idiosyncratic can happen at any dose dose related will happen only at the dose above 100 mg per kg body weight the dose related one which is 100 mg per kg body weight and above when you stop the therapy after some days it will recover but the idiosyncratic may recover may not recover and one more thing is does chloramphenicol therapy that has been given in high doses at some point in time in future lead to risk of leukemias it will increase people who have taken cumulatively high doses of chloramphenicol in future may be at risk of developing leukemias so these are important about chloramphenicol it is broad spectrum or narrow spectrum it is broad spectrum both aerobic and anaerobic gram positive gram negative everyone but the problem is with the bone marrow depression not only bone marrow depression in future after therapy has been completed risk of leukemia that is why it is an orphan drug in most countries we were at 107 okay which of the following is an effect of grapefruit juice on this grapefruit is separate or this is the same grape that we take see this grapefruit spelling you see and the grape that we take you see this grapefruit is a combined word it is called a complex word see grapefruit is there any space in between grape and fruit here it is grapefruit that grapefruit is different it is not the grapes that we take so this is different you just google you will get the image of grapefruit which one no no this grapefruit which is an enzyme inhibitor is a different grapefruit this is not the grapes that we take our grapes that we take have no enzyme inhibiting property this grapefruit juice has the ability to inhibit cytochrome p450 enzymes so it is an enzyme inhibitor so in the western countries where people use grapefruit juice if they are using some medications they should be careful especially some immunosuppressants like cyclosporine tacrolimax cyrolimax they are metabolized by cyp3a4 and you know with what they are generally given fruit juice so if someone says i like grape fruit juice therefore i am taking with grape fruit juice he will have severe immunosuppression and that will increase the risk of bacterial viral and fungal infection so grape fruit juice is a powerful microsomal enzyme inhibitor any other level of drug that is given with it it will rise most common cytochrome associated with metabolism of drugs is this everyone knows cyp3a4 5 it is called cyp3a4 3a5 system cytochrome p450 it is called microsomal mixed function oxygenase system microsomal mixed function oxygenase system and which is the trace element that is part of this microsomal mixed function oxygenase system so people may give you four they may say selenium they may say zinc they may say copper they may say iron cytochrome cytochrome is always iron it is heme containing protein porphyrin rings iron is the constituent of this and peak absorption if you do spectrophotometry the peak absorption of this cytochrome p450 proteins will be at 450 nanometers that is why they are called cytochrome p450 so now 3a4 when you have cytochrome p450 you know why it is p450 why it is cytochrome because it belongs to that porphyrin containing structure then 450 nanometer peak absorption it will take place then what is 3 what is a what is 4 3 is family 
A is subfamily, 4 is the isomer. It may have 10 isomers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But the most important is fourth isomer. A is the subfamily, 3 is the family. So, this is like grandfather, father, son. So, like that cytochrome P450, 3A4. Family, subfamily and specific isomer number.